This video is going to show you how to make my life-changing loaf of bread. It may sound like a bold claim, but I'm pretty convinced it's gonna change your life too. I am a serious bread lover, but when I started transitioning from a standard diet to a healthier and more plant-based diet, bread was really the first thing to go. Most bread that we get at the supermarket or even a bakery is loaded with things that aren't so great for us, like processed flour. Processed flour comes from the grain of wheat that's had everything stripped from it, and it's really only the endosperm or the carbohydrate portion of the grain that we're actually receiving. So this bread recipe uses all whole food ingredients. It's loaded with protein, with amazing fiber, and really healthy fats. It's absolutely delicious and so simple to make. Now, I don't know about you, but I have actually endeavored to make regular bread before, and it's really complicated, and it makes such an incredible mess. There's flour all over the place. You always have to use some kind of starter, and that's typically yeast. And for some sensitive people who have yeast sensitivity, it's not the best thing to include. But making a sourdough starter can be a little bit of work and you have to wait for it. So this bread actually doesn't use any kind of starter whatsoever, um, which is really convenient, especially if you're pressed for time. And there's also no kneading involved. There's no waiting, there's no letting it rise. It's really the simplest, most foolproof loaf of bread you'll ever make. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you the ingredients first. We have oats, these are whole grain, just rolled oats. And just keep in mind when you're looking for oats for this recipe that you don't get the quick oats or the instant oats, especially the non-flavored ones, that's really important. I'm gonna add those to my bowl here. Then I have sunflower seeds. These are raw hulled sunflower seeds. They haven't been roasted or salted. That's also really important. Next we have flax seeds. Flax seeds are a really amazing source of lignans, which are a cancer-fighting compound. Um, the lignans are actually on the, ex the exterior of the flax seed. It's what um, gives it that sort of crunchiness. It's a uh, really good fiber. I'm going to add that. Flax seeds in this recipe help bind everything together, along with our chia seeds. Uh, if you've watched the previous videos, you know I'm a huge fan of chia. It's a fantastic ingredient to add to your daily diet. It's loaded with protein, really good fibers and fats, and it has um, a wonderful binding ability in the body as well. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, sea salt. This is fine grain sea salt and some chopped almonds. Now, what if you don't have almonds? What if you have an almond allergy? You can actually use seeds in the place of almonds. You can also use hazelnuts, walnuts, Brazil nuts, macadamia nuts, whatever you like. I'm going to give them a bit of a rough chop and that's just so when we're slicing the bread, it's a bit easier to do that. Make sure when you're buying any kind of nut or seed for any of my recipes that they are unroasted, unsalted, they should be totally raw, and it will say that on the package. All right, that's looking good. We just want them sort of chopped up a little bit. There we go. So, into the bowl, okay. So the very cool ingredient in this recipe is psyllium seed husks. I'm really a fan of this ingredient because this is sort of what acts as the flour in this bread recipe. In case you didn't notice, there isn't anything um, to bind it together except for this. This is the secret. So psyllium seed husk has this amazing ability to absorb water. In fact, it's one of the most absorbent fibers in nature and it can absorb up to 10 times its weight in liquid. And so that's what's gonna hold the bread together in place of flour. So psyllium seed husk has both types of fiber in it, both soluble and insoluble. The soluble fiber is what's gonna bind um, impurities in our body, actually, and toxins and help pull them out of the digestive tract. And the insoluble fiber acts like a broom and sweeps the digestive tract clean. So you may be familiar with this product. You may have seen this in cleansing kits or um, if you've ever done a detox, for instance, so it's really good for that as well. Um, it doesn't have a strong flavor, uh, which is also great. So you're really getting all the other flavors of the ingredients and the psyllium husk is really there to bind it together. 
And to answer many questions that I've gotten about this, no, you cannot replace the psyllium with anything. You have to get psyllium seed husk. But luckily, it's very easy to get in drug stores now and all health food stores have it and even some grocery stores, which is great. So those are all of our dry ingredients. I'm gonna give those a quick mix. It's important that the psyllium especially is well combined in here. There we go. Now, the other thing is, you know, like I said before, when I make bread, I typically make a big mess. This recipe is pretty genius because you, in fact, don't even need a bowl to mix this. You can do it right in the loaf pan, which is really nice, especially if you're lazy or in a rush. I'm only doing it in this bowl to show you. Um, but if you're doing this at home, just get a loaf pan. You can mix the whole thing right in there. So that's the other bonus about this recipe. No bowls to wash. So into my water, I'm going to combine a little coconut oil. This has already been melted and that's important just because it's liquid. And then a little bit of maple syrup. You could also use honey if you like or another kind of liquid sweetener. So I'll mix that up a little bit. And I just pour the wet ingredients into the dry. And the important part here is that you work relatively quickly because that psyllium is actually so strong, especially combined with the chia and flax, that it's going to start absorbing the liquid really quickly. And this is another reason why it's great to do right in the pan. So, that looks pretty good. Make sure you get right into the bottom because sometimes the psyllium can sink down there. Great. All right, I'm gonna put this into my loaf pan. Now, I actually really like using a silicone loaf pan for this just because um, it's really flexible and easy. But if you want to use a metal one like I have here, just line it with some baking paper um, and that will be totally fine. It's just so that the bread is really easy to remove from the loaf pan. There we go. So get all the goodness in. There we are. And I'm just gonna smooth out the top. The other really cool thing about this bread, if you recall from week two and why it's important to soak nuts and seeds and grains, this bread is really wonderful because of the water content. Um, you are actually soaking everything ahead of time, which is fantastic. So if you have digestive issues, especially with nuts and seeds, this bread's gonna be great for you because one of the reasons people have a hard time digesting nuts and seeds is because that they're not activated, they're not soaked. So this bread recipe addresses that issue as well. And everything is so easy to break down in our bodies, which is fantastic. I also get a lot of questions about this bread being, um, or how many calories it contains and whatnot. Yes, this bread is really caloric, but that's another reason why it's so perfect for the athlete because a slice of this has so much energy in it, which is fantastic. It's great for anyone, but especially the athlete who have um, higher caloric needs. And it's also a really fantastic balance of protein, fat, and carbohydrates, which is really important for everybody, but especially the athlete. And there, that's looking really good. So we just wanna get it nice and flat, make sure it's pretty compact. And I can already tell that the psyllium is binding everything together. It's really turning into a loaf in its own right. So there you have it. You can see how firm it is already. Now I'm actually gonna let this soak overnight or for eight hours, that's optimal. Um, and then you bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. At the 20 minute mark, actually remove the whole thing from the oven, flip it over and you can set the pan aside and then you actually just put the loaf on the rack upside down. And that's because when you put it in the oven like this, you're gonna cook the top part of it and then when you flip it over, you're gonna have the underside bake really well. And the cool thing about this bread is too, it gets so crispy and delicious around the edges and we really want to make sure that the entire thing is baked evenly. So that's why we do it that way. After you've flipped it over and it's in the oven, not in the pan any longer, it needs to bake for 30 to 40 minutes approximately. And when you take it out of the oven, uh, it will sound a little bit hollow when you tap on it and that's when you know it's done. Anyway, I'm gonna go let this rest and bake it in a few hours.
So my bread is fully baked and cooled. Just to give you guys an idea of what it should sound like when you take it out of the oven, it should be like this. Yeah, so it's kind of hollow sounding. It smells so amazing. I'm just gonna slice this up now. It's really hard to wait till it's cool, but I highly recommend you do that because when it's still warm, it's actually a bit delicate and it's really important that it's fully cooled so that you get a really good slice. Slice it this way so you can see. Oh, it's so crusty and so good. So there's a good interior shot. It's so beautiful. It's speckled with all the nuts and seeds and you can see the oats and it's just, it's such a beautiful bread. Honestly, so delicious. So I'll make a couple slices here. And I have our ghee that we made from week two and also our homemade nut butter. Now, if you like toast, this bread makes the best toast ever. So even though I'm gonna eat it fresh now, I actually prefer it toasted. It's so good because what happens when you toast it, then all of these little interior seeds and nuts get really roasted and it's just like, ah, it's, it's really good. <laughs> I'll calm down now. So, yeah, so why is this bread life-changing? Well, it's life-changing because there's no mess, there's no yeast, there's no kneading, there's no waiting, there's no flour, it's whole, it's super high in protein, really high in fiber. It's just the most perfect, really perfect bread. Now, it's obviously not gonna taste like a crusty baguette or something, but again, when we start eating healthier, we have to make some changes. And if this is the compromise that I'm making, then sign me up. Uh, so here's our nut butter. Oh, so good. And this bread will keep um, in the fridge. It's actually best if you keep it in the fridge uh, for about a week, week and a half. Although I highly doubt it will stick around that long in your house. That's it. Um, I'm gonna take a bite because I can't resist. Mm -hmm. It's so yummy. Anyway, that's a life-changing loaf of bread. It's changed my life. And I'm positive once you give this a try, it will change yours too.